Oh my god, it's insane. <laughs> it's hell. The bite which wasted my wild afternoon. Oh my god. Let's see um, how big is this class. I've bought a library to save time and speed up work on my game, Lizard. Guess what? It is terrible. I wasted hours trying to get it to work. Now, I don't claim to be a superstar when it comes to 3D algorithms. I don't know how to build an optimized mesh from voxels or how to programmatically rig characters, add bone weights to vertices and all that. So I thought, how about I just buy a library that does most of it, so I can focus on the most important aspect of the work streamlining my game building process. You see, when you're a solo developer, you need to offload as much work as possible to automated processes and use tools that are most comfortable for you. I've chosen Magica Voxel as a design tool for my game. I like the style. It's kind of like pixel art, but in 3D. However, this tool lacks basic support for animation. No character rigging is possible. And even if it would, the exported OBJ format doesn't support animation. So no dice. Now I could take those OBJs and perhaps rig them in Blender, but that is hard and time consuming, especially when you want to have hundreds of characters. Here is the thought. I'll buy something of the asset store that has good base to start off. I'll make it into automated rigging tool that will unpack Magica Voxel files and produce Unity assets with bones and textures ready for animation. Just a couple of tweaks here and there and we'll be good, right? Right. What I'm about to show you is meant as a way to educate and learn, not to mock the author. I'm certain that they have put a lot of work into this and they are clearly still learning. Code shows some good potential here and there. And I'm stressing this again. The intention here is to show some common mistakes that junior developers make when they are struggling with problems in real application. We'll start by looking at the product page to understand what I was promised. So many features, seems like a lot. I feel like Gordon Ramsay looking at the menu with 195 positions. I really hope they are good, but there is only one guy in the kitchen. They say that every part of this tool is well designed. Hmm, I'm gonna trust them and buy the asset. And we're in. Let's check out the UI. So what do we have here? Well, we have multiple options here. We can do rigging, skeletal animation, sprite, map generation, uh, character generation, and prefab combiner. So there's a lot of options in this one. All right, let's do rigging because that's what we actually want. I have a prepared Vox file here that I'm going to open and actually, yeah, import. And this is the view. So immediately you see there are some issues with the buttons, how they are scaled because I cannot see all of them. However, the more irritating thing is that you cannot use this space of the screen at all. So it doesn't really matter if you like collapse close tabs on both sides. It's like fixed here. There is no way of changing this size, but that's not the worst. Let's do add some major bones quickly and let's select a bone and find weight. So there is this weird jitter that you see it goes away on some certain angles and there is something wrong. Let's close this for a bit and let's see what's going on. For example, here, um, character generator start. So as you can see down here, uh, there is something weird happening. Everything is, you know, kind of skewed and there's this weird scroll bar. I'm not sure what to do uh, next. Organ? Attachment? All right, and then I press generate and I get something like this. I guess I just disabled the face, did I? Oh, visible, yes, I need the visible head. 
So this part, you know, uh, it seems like it's it's here and, and it's working as expected. Let's dive into the actual code so I can figure out how can I extend this. So this is our solution over here. We have a lot of files here. It's not enough. <laughs> and you could, and you will see uh, in a second why. All right. So let's let's take a look at something that lies underneath the whole structure. We have mesh. Mesh. Mesh is the building block of uh, your 3D scenes. All of the characters, all of the tiles, all of the blocks, walls, uh, items that you see on your, in your games, these are made up of meshes. Meshes are, well, mesh is like a container of triangles that make up a three-dimensional object in your game. Yeah, this mesh is called <sighs> unlimited mesh. That's right, it's not unlimited, it's an unlimited unlimited mesh. So that's the first thing that we need to correct. Uh, of course, we want we, we want to have unlimited mesh. Those uh, type of issues are not big ones, but it's important to get your spelling right, because when you search for things, you won't know about something being misspelled. So you will search for unlimited mesh. Um, what is unlimited mesh, by the way? If you take a look down here, Unlimited mesh actually has a limit. Max vertex count. Vertex is basically like a three-dimensional uh, coordinate. So when you have a list of four vertexes, one, two, three, four, you will say, okay, one, fa one face is using one, two, three, and the other is using two, three, four. And that's how you build a face in 3D space. So when we think about how do we store those indexes, so this is the maximal value, right? that we could store in 16 bits. So this is also misnamed, right? Vertex limit per mesh, because that's what it is, right? Each mesh that you're going to create is limited to basically 65,000 and something. What is unlimited mesh doing? It's creating, you know, a list of meshes, right? And this list is here. And that list is storing uh, meshes that are of this size, this many vertices. So if your model that you're planning to store or edit is bigger than that, this class will store two meshes. And yeah, these meshes will make up a bigger model. So it's not unlimited mesh because it's not one mesh. What this actually is, is either a mesh list or mesh group or something like that. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, multi-mesh because yeah, it, it's a cool name, right? If you read this, you kind of get, you know, the gist of it. It's multi-mesh. It stores multiple meshes. What is this? Get mesh out. So if you don't know, this is the indexer. It allows you to just access your objects with, uh, you know, square brackets and it will act as an accessor. It will return something. So get mesh out. What's that? Oh, return mesh index. So we basically have two methods to do the same thing. We don't need those. Uh, we can just remove this, get rid of that, and instead go back up top and return it like so. We don't need another method, right? It will just introduce more chaos. The file would get bigger. So this file is, is pretty good in size. It's 130 lines or so, um, but it still could be smaller. The golden rule of you know your classes in size is there the classes shouldn't be bigger than about 200 lines, but aim for less than 100, right? And if you do that, you will be able to, you know, navigate your class hierarchy better, faster. It will be simpler to, you know, do anything. So one of the things that you want to do is try to avoid, you know, this type of spaces like so. So this is formatted. Uh, I used quick formatting with Ctrl E D that formats your document in C sharp. It's very fast and yeah, that's what you need to do. This is mixed. It shouldn't be like that. It should be like this. And we don't need this. And we don't actually need this markers. We know what the API is. It's a method, right? All right. So we have some accessors and then we have a constructor, a multi-mesh and some weird names. Vertices and UVs. So we have list of a list of vectors and list of a list of vectors again. This is two dimensional, three dimensional vector. So what's happening here? Let's start with that. If you have something like this, that you have some preliminary constraints for your arguments to a constructor, you should never ever return 
before initializing your object, right? So next step is actually initializing those lists. And if that would be the case, you know, in a real project, and you wouldn't know that this object would, wasn't, you know, correctly initialized because you just silently exit. So those lists don't get initialized and the next place that you're using, you know, your object, you're, you know, basically encountering null uh, pointer. So that's weird, right? Never do this. Instead, when this happens, when the criteria that you set for this object are not met, throw an exception. Then whoever is creating an object can catch this exception and correct, you know, the data that it's providing because it, they know, they have a way of knowing that. So use exceptions if you can, or something along those lines, right? It doesn't really matter what that is. Uh, we don't need those braces here. I'm trying to avoid the braces if I can. Uh, what's wrong with this? Using system, right. Next step is we are doing this. So we initialize lists with some empty values. That's good. However, you know, we already done that, right? So why do it again? That's unnecessary and that's clutter. Let's just remove this. Uh, but let's take a look at what the actual constructor is doing. So I don't want to introduce you guys to, you know, all of the details just quickly. There is a list for every material that this object has. And in that list, we have vectors for this particular material. And this is not obvious when you look at this code unless you, you know, start reading and trying to understand it. Maybe if we just rename this like then it would make more sense because now we can conceptualize what's going on inside here. Names are extremely um, easy to get wrong and hard to get good, but they enable, you know, reader of your code to get through it way faster. So get white colors. We set colors for mesh. Let's see what that does. So this method, is it a correct method to have? So we have vertex count and for this vertex count, we will provide an array that will contain this color white. So I don't know why exactly, because I haven't gotten to that part just yet. <sighs> but you can tell that this creates an array filled with color white. So, you know, like, first of all, you don't need to create a variable for color white, right? You can just get rid of this. Keep it simple if you can, remove as many lines as possible. And even though that is totally useless, we don't really need that method because we can do this entire thing with something simple like this. Enterable, repeat, color that white, vertex count to array. And that's the entire method. So why create a method when you can just use link? It's simple, link is a tool that has been available for quite some time already. Okay, uh, so what do we have here? We have util section. Let's look into here. Util section, this is the, uh, the thing that always worries me when I see a class that is named, or a file that is named util. Because util usually means all of the things in one bag. So whenever you look for something, you cannot find it because it's, there's everything in one bag. So I'm opening this file and instantly I see, oh my God, Oh my God, we have six, six section here. So this is also a, f a hint that something is wrong when you start introducing, you know, regions in your C sharp, unless this is some, you know, generated code that it makes sense for regions to be there because it's long or does something crazy. That's worrying. All right. So let's take a look at this. We have file. And as we can tell, file contains all of the utilities that are related to file. So we can read a file, we can write a file, we can create a folder, file to byte. Ah, uh, there's a lot of it. That could easily be a class. Why have a util class that contains everything? And, you know, I do this in production code, right? I do have util as a folder, but in there, every single thing that doesn't belong in anything else has a name, has a class, has a structure to it. So when you open a file, you know that what the file is about. So you can instantly navigate, you know, through this right hand side and not get bogged by trying to, you know, read all of this code and, you know, click here and say, oh, is it here in the path? No, was it here in the message? Watch, what, what, what was the watch? 
miscellaneous uh, things are the worst. So not only we have util, but also miscellaneous, which is just a bunch of random methods that don't belong anywhere else. But you know, they actually do. You know, if we take a look here in miscellaneous, there's create cone mesh, create sector mesh. So we have at least two meshes that could, you know, make up a class because uh, this is quite a substantial chunk of code, right? So all of that could, again, this is weird, but all of that could be placed in a class, right? It doesn't need to be here in miscellaneous and utils class. Try to navigate that code if you haven't touched it you know, for two months. You won't remember where you put the thing that you're looking for. And if you're new to the project, like I am, it's like, it takes forever to learn where everything is. And until you do, you keep forgetting where was the thing that you were just reading. Oh my God, it's insane, <laughs> it's hell. All right, however, you know, that's not the funniest thing that I found in here. I clicked on this and then you scroll down and you'll find this. The byte which wasted my while afternoon. Wow. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm not laughing about, you know, the while part, right? Uh, not all of us are native English speakers. And uh, given, you know, that this person is coming from non-Latin alphabet, it's even harder for them. So. This part, I'm happy to excuse. There is, you know, right? So that's okay. Uh, but I'm worried about this uh, case here. Usually you have either camel case, pascal case, snake case, or sometimes thing that is called kebab case. None of them are looking like that. Don't introduce, you know, some crazy notations because uh, when you search for things, you won't find them. Right, so given this is a parameter, it should be camel case. I appreciate the humor, right? I feel you, bro. I know how it is. I would still name it correctly. Let's keep it here for amusement. However, you know, the bite which wasted your whole afternoon, you know, that bite is actually described in the Vox specification, which is open and see here. This perfectly explains your bite that wasted the entire afternoon. And, you know, Magica Voxel uh, has this Vox model and extension specification that you can just read. And if you follow it, it will work. So start by searching the internet and start by official sources. It could, you know, maybe save an entire afternoon for you. Let's get uh, to the next thing. And this is a good one. You know, guys, it's, it's, it's awesome. So. As you can see, this is quite a big uh, chunk of this code here. So this is a custom class that the author created to, you know, encompass, encapsulate his GUI window. So all of the editor windows that we have seen, you know, the rigging, the uh, animation of skeleton and um, character generation, map generation, all of that, is here. So we have, you know, those. And they are inheriting from this class. So far, so good. Okay, we have some base window and it, you know, provides methods like link, button, and integer field, float field. All right, that's, you know, simple and easy to follow, min max field. This is the base class. And if we take a look in here, this is voxel editor window. Remember I said that I like my classes to be less than 200 lines? So there is a lot of code here. I already expanded some of the collapsed things here, but let's collapse them again and let's take a look. What, what do we have here? Again, six section of a class. Hold on. This is a partial class. All of those classes, rig, scene, skeletal, sprite, they are not separate. This is one giant class. All right, uh, let's do a class view and let's see um, how big is this class 
voxel editor window. That is the There is 195 methods in this class. 195. Remember that thing I said about Gordon Ramsay? This is how I feel. Try to navigate this. Try to understand where is what. And then you get methods like flip. And that tells you perfectly what the method is about in this class. What could flip mean and voxel editor window? What could generate mean? Are we generating this character or are we generating bones or what? So this is insane. Uh, yeah, split your classes if you can, right? Don't, don't, don't do it like that. That, oh God. Okay, um, but, this is clearly a mistake. 195 methods make up 11,000 lines. That's too much, right? You need to break it up. Uh, so I'm not going to do this right now because we don't have two days. All right, var. So var is a section that contains a lot of variables that are, well, interestingly mixed between something that is private const and static and uh, yeah uh, actually many things here are static and this is worrying me um so there is nothing you know implicitly wrong with using static however you know when we look at this main that that is actually an instance of this very class and it's also static they are assigning it to the main and then they are using it in a static code in order to you know, access the instance. So instead of that, how about you just create an instance and not have static methods? That this is as simple. Because if you ever, for some reason, want to have two windows open at the same time, you're totally unable to do that in this model, right? You wouldn't be able to create another instance of your editor and, for example, work on a different model. So this is the thing that I've been looking at render texture height and it's a const it's a private const int if i increase it you know my picture will become bigger so i can actually see things that i'm editing <laughs> uh, and you know for my purpose i can just change it to something fixed and that'll be good but this should never be the case you know in a library or, or a tool that is being used by multiple people with different monitor size. It's, it's simply incorrect. So how is our GUI rendered? So it is rendered like that. We have a long list of statements, a long list of calls, and based on some state, we are displaying one part of this class or another or another, or another. In properly structured code, we would have an interface uh, for all of these different tabs here. And we could just call, uh, you know, draw GUI on currently visible class, currently visible window. And whenever we switch, you know, modes, we would just change the reference to currently visible window and that would be it. As you can tell, there is way too much code to review in one go. Paid library that was supposed to solve my problems in my project turned out to be a project on its own. I had to build a mental map of the solution, try to understand all of the relations and meanings behind weird names, and finally dig through it to find issues that have been bothering me. Going through it all takes about a day or so, which is essentially consuming my entire free time I had this weekend. I could just pick up another library from the shop and hope for a refund on this one, but it is possible that the alternative is even worse. So what I'm going to do, first step 
would be to remove all of the features that I don't need. 2.5D sprites, map generator, character generator, voxel editor and whatnot. I might have a character generator in my game, but most likely it will be something that I will write from scratch. And to do all this I will have to probably throw in another 20 hours or so. So now there is important lesson to be taken away from this. Software development is really hard and when people don't review your code, you won't learn how to write it better. If you're new to this, if you're new to the programming, you will make mistakes and you'll need help. Ask for it and be humble in receiving feedback. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers.